Hello and welcome! In this video lesson, you will see a demonstration of setting up and running a conjugate heat transfer simulation in ANSYS Fluent. In the case we are going to set up and solve, two water streams with different temperatures are flowing through a T-junction. The T-junction is made of steel and has two inlets. At the main inlet, the water velocity is 1 meter per second and the temperature 80 degrees Celsius. At the side inlet, the velocity is 0.5 m per second and the temperature 20 degrees Celsius. The ambient air temperature outside the T-junction is 10 degrees Celsius. The Reynolds number of the flow, based on the main inlet diameter of 152 mm and the inlet velocity of 1 m per second, is 152,000. So, the flow is turbulent. Let's now look at how to set up the simulation. Here we have ANSYS Fluent that was launched in double precision with the MES file already loaded. As the water temperatures are given in degrees Celsius, I will first click Units and in the Set Units panel, I will set temperature to Celsius. In the Physics tab, under the Models group, I will check Energy to solve for temperature. As the flow is turbulent, I will keep the default turbulence model, which is the K Omega SST. Next, I will click Materials and from the Fluent database, I will add water for the fluid and steel for the solid. I will now go to Cell Zones, edit the fluid zone and select water as material for this zone. Then I will go to the solid zone and select steel. Next I will set up the boundary conditions. For the inlets, I will use the Quick Property Editor. Click on the main inlet in the Graphics window and set the velocity to 1 m per second and the temperature to 80 degrees Celsius. In the same way, I will set the velocity to 0.5 m per second and the temperature to 20 degrees Celsius for the side inlet. The outlet is set by default to pressure outlet with a zero gauge pressure. Here I will set the backflow total temperature to 80 degrees Celsius. This temperature is only imposed to the flow in case a backflow is experienced on this boundary. Next I will click on the external wall of the T-junction. We see this is named convection and is set by default to zero heat flux. As I want to set this to a convection boundary condition, I will click more and in the wall boundary condition panel, I will select convection and will set a heat transfer coefficient of 10 watt per square meter and a free stream temperature of 10 degrees Celsius. Finally, I will check the default settings of the two remaining walls. Double clicking on the wall named fluid solid in the outline view, we can see under adjacent cell zone, this wall belongs to the fluid zone. Its thermal conditions are set to coupled, which is what we want for conjugate heat transfer problems. Double clicking on the wall named Fluid Solid Shadow, we see this wall belongs to the solid zone and again its thermal conditions are set to coupled. Next, I will go to the Solution tab and create three report definitions. The first report is for the mass weighted average temperature at the outlet. The second is for the mass weighted average velocity at the outlet. The third report is for the area weighted average pressure at both inlets, enabling also the per surface option. Next, I will initialize the solution using the default hybrid initialization. Once done, I will set the time scale factor to 2, the number of iterations to 100 and click Calculate.
the solution converges rapidly and the report plots show that all monitored variables at the inlets and the outlet have reached constant values. Now I will do a mass and energy balance check to further ensure the convergence of the problem. We see that the mass imbalance is negligible compared with the mass fluxes through any of the inlet and outlet boundaries. The total heat transfer rate imbalance is more than 10% of the net heat transfer rate through the convection walls. This shows that although the residuals and the chosen monitors indicate a good convergence, there is still a reasonably high level of energy imbalance. To fix this, we need to run the solution for more iterations. I will open the residuals panel and will set the target residual for energy to 110 to the minus 8, that is two orders of magnitude lower than the default value of 110 to the minus 6, and perform additional iterations. The solution converges further. Let's now check the total heat transfer rate imbalance, which is now less than 1% of the net heat transfer rate through the convection walls, which is acceptable. Let us now go to the results tab and create a control plot of the temperature on all walls, inlets and outlets. The outlet temperature profile is not uniform, indicating that the mixing of the hot and the cold water streams is not efficient. Let us now create path lines of fine cylinder style with a path skip of 6 from both inlets painted by temperature. A mesh plot for the convection and the fluid solid walls. A scene of the path lines and the mesh plot setting the mesh to a transparency of 50%. Note the complex swirling flow pattern where the cold stream from the side inlet enters. It appears the temperature of this stream is increased as indicated by the lighter colors of the path lines, but the cold fluid does not mix further with the mainstream by the time the outlet is reached. So, that's the end of this demo where we looked at how to set up a conjugate heat transfer problem in ANSYS Fluent. Thank you very much for watching.